Hello, dear viewer, and welcome to another review from the other side of the world. I want to start today's video with a bit of an admission. I am a cheapskate. In fact, few things bring me as much joy as not spending money. It gives me a little thrill in my heart. But what if a cheapskate like me wanted to buy a car? Say something that costs about as much as a motorcycle, while also offering fully electric transportation for four with a roof. Well, it would seem that for now, at a starting price of about $4,500, the best and maybe only answer is this, the Wuling Mini EV. The exterior styling of the Mini EV takes a lot of inspiration from K-Cars, that wonderfully quirky class of microcar from Japan. It has the same upright box-on-wheels look as microvans like the Honda Acti and Suzuki Every. Remarkably, however, it is even smaller than those cars, measuring in at less than 3 meters in length. I think it's that stubbiness that gives it most of its charm. Uh, it all comes together to look something like a pug on wheels, all scrunched up face and squat little body. It's really hard not to smile when you look at this car. Of course, no conversation about the outside of this car could fail to mention this beautiful Dorymon sticker on the side of it. This was put on by the dealership from which we're borrowing this car, and it is used as kind of a demonstrator. If you see these things in the wild, you will know that many, many owners put on all sorts of stickers. I've seen German flags and French flags and Chinese flags, any number of things. While we're on the side, I also need to point out these wonderful, wonderful wheels. That's right. We're rocking 12 inch alloys, baby, on 145 70 section tires. But hey, you pay bike prices, you get bike tires. One of the more amazing things that I learned about this car was that it went from clean sheet design to start of production in about 12 months. That's insanely fast for the car industry, where developing even the simplest vehicle usually takes years. The rear design is pretty nice to look at as well, with this black piece here that kind of adds a little bit of width to the look. If I open up the rear hatch here, you will see that it is not a full-size rear door, which is a little bit disappointing in terms of accessibility and storage. Speaking of storage, it is at a premium here in the back, which I guess you can't expect much from a car this small. I brought this cardboard box just to give you an idea. If I place it here, it just barely fits. Now that we're inside the Mini EV, I can tell you that there are absolutely no frills in here. Now, the only screen, for example, is the small one here in front of the driver that acts as an instrument cluster. There are some nice little splashes of color, for example, here around the center controls, as well as the blue around the shift knob and, and several other places. But it's when you start touching things that you remember why it is this car tops out at less than $5,500. Plastic quality, particularly here on the door, as well as the flat, expansive dashboard, is somewhere between an economy car and a public bathroom. Features in Creature Comforts are about in line with what you would expect. In addition to the screen that services the instrument cluster, you also get a rudimentary display for your sound system that would look more at home in a car from the mid-1980s. Seat adjustment is manual, but you get power windows! Those used to be optional on cars that cost way more than this. My, how the times have changed. The back seats are about as cramped as you would expect. And now, the design of the seats is also very, very basic, much like the fronts, and they're not particularly comfortable. I can't imagine grown adults being happy back here for more than 15 minutes at a time or so. Of course, if you wanted to go grocery shopping, you would need to fold these seats down anyways. The Mini EV is powered by a single rear-mounted electric motor, putting out just 17.5 horsepower and 85 newton meters of torque through a single-speed transmission. This monster of a motor gets its juice from either a 9.3 or 13.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, delivering 120 and 170 kilometers of range respectively. There will be no fast charging for this little guy, so it will take you anywhere from 6.5 to 9 hours to charge your Mini EV on a normal 240 volt outlet. Interestingly, the Mini EV comes equipped with an energy recovery system, which I absolutely did not expect. 
As a result, one pedal driving is both possible and easy. Physics being what it is, even at a bonkers 665 kilograms, the Mini V is not quick. I wouldn't even necessarily describe it as spirited. Acceleration over 20 kilometers an hour or so is very, very mild. Uh, Wuling does not provide an official 0 to 100 kilometer per hour time, and I think that's for two reasons. The first is that the official top speed of this car is 100 kilometers per hour. The other is that I don't think there are very many people who are brave enough to actually drive it that fast. I say this because the Wuling Mini EV, much like the Hongguang Plus from Wuling that we drove earlier this year, has a conspicuous lack of safety equipment. I'm not referring to equipment that is now standard fare across the industry, like lane keep assist or blind spot monitoring. No, I mean that apart from ABS and seat belts, this thing has almost no safety equipment at all. That means no airbags, no electronic stability programming, nothing. There's not even a passenger uh, seat belt reminder. There's only one for the driver. The faster you drive this thing, the more you remember that it is essentially a cute steel can. You just have to hope that the unibody will protect you in the event of a crash. I promise I do have some good things to say about this car, but let's get more of the bad things out of the way first. Uh, the air conditioning is the weakest that I've experienced in a modern car, ever. I can put it on full crank and it only seems to push out lukewarm air. The seats are also some of the most uncomfortable that I have ever sat in. They are a rock hard foam material and while I'm sure it wears well, they're very difficult to adjust into any kind of comfortable position. You also don't really sit in the car so much as on top of it. The dashboard is pretty easy to read, I guess, but everything else is, is, is very, very rudimentary. There isn't even a park. You get reverse, neutral, and drive. I didn't know that was even possible. Your park is the handbrake. That's it. Uh, the suspension on the Wuling is pretty simple. It's McPherson struts up front, multi-link in the rear, and the ride is, well, it's not good. I think that this is one of those cars where at no point will you forget just how cheap that it is. Going over any kind of bumps is a, <clears throat> it's an adventure. You never know whether you're going to slam your head forward or backwards, but either way, you're probably gonna move around in your seat. That doesn't mean you can't have any fun in the Mini EV. The narrow body and very short wheelbase make it very fun to dart in and out of tight spaces in traffic or in parking lots. I constantly find myself looking for very tight squeezes that I can try and make it through. It's, it's kind of a fun little game to play with yourself. It's rear wheel drive and rear mounted motor, but the dynamics aren't particularly good for drifting. I'll let you guys see what it looks like when I tried to do that. Of course, it's entirely possible that I have too much mechanical sympathy. Also, I was a little bit worried that it would flip over onto its head. The other good thing, of course, about the short wheelbase and narrow body is that this thing can be parked more or less anywhere, which makes it perfect for a place like Shanghai. In order to understand the appeal of the Mini EV for the Chinese market, you first need to understand the niche that it fills. Let's note, first of all, that someone who's considering buying a Mini EV probably isn't comparing it to, say, a Toyota Corolla, because a Toyota Corolla costs four times as much. What about a used car, you might be saying? Well, a used car might be able to compete on purchase price alone, but putting a license plate on a car that can drive inside the city limits costs as much as $10,000 here in China. The Mini EV, because it's an electric vehicle, well, its license plate is free. Now, that's not a problem for rural buyers, but the Mini EV still offers a compelling alternative to the electric scooters or gas motorcycles that those buyers usually uh, purchase. It's also a vast improvement over the even smaller electric vehicles that are favored by older rural consumers, and also Jason Torchinsky over at Jalopnik. It's simply a good, cheap solution 
for Chinese buyers in almost every situation. Does that mean that this cheapskate is going to rush out and purchase a mini EV of his own? No, not quite. While the mini EV certainly has its charms, I don't think I'm the uh, ideal market for it. I simply cannot be comfortable driving this car because of the issues with safety and because it is overall kind of just uncomfortable to be inside of. Having said that, for a small family, for example, whose other alternative is an electric scooter or a motorcycle or something like that, I think it's a genuinely good choice. All right, thank you for watching.